water is always river water. Oh, wow. We were missing last week. But due to community effort to paper the town with lost stock, posters, we are gathered back in the village square to cajole and make merriment upon you. With more daylight in the air we will also be able to more clearly explain with hand gestures and facial expressions what we are trying to communicate to you. Please write in with your nature questions as half the crew was out living in the wild last week and are itching to tell you how to avoid the poison ivy bush. We are glad to be back. Hope you welcome us in again as you did before. We come bearing gifts. Sitting on a log, one of them fell in. One frog said to the other frog, Well, you better go get a beer. Two little frogs sitting on a log, one of them fell in. Last little frog he sat and thought, Good thing they can swim. Jabber John, Jabber John, Jabber John. Jabber John Three little frogs sitting on a log One burst into a grin One frog said to the other frog Wonder what's got into him Two little frogs sitting on a log One laughed until he is red Last little frog he sat and thought it Must have been something I said Jabber John Jabber John We did it. We're back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Settle. All right. All right. All right. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Nathan Moore. This is Kyle Hogg, Steve Moore. Hi. We are Jabber John. You are watching, I don't know, you could be on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you are. It's good to see you. Talk to us. We can see you here in the chat on our Discord server. They're all siphoned to that one hub. So we see you. And uh, it's good to be with you. Welcome. Welcome. I, uh, I don't really agree with that at all. I don't see any of them. Mm -hmm. um, you tell me somebody might be there, but I, I don't see anybody. You need to speak for yourself it's more. It's faith. You, you're, you're operating on some version of faith over there. A lot a lot of faith. <laughs> you got to have faith. You do have Discord on your phone. Well, yeah, and I'm not going to be in the middle of a show with all these people watching and be looking at my phone. I respect that. I don't think that's, that's appropriate. So that's a generational and I, and I, thing. And it takes me twenty minutes to find Discord anyway. <laughs> so I don't have the time. But uh, yeah, but I get you. I'm I'm hard. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Wasn't well, really upset or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you were. Well, I've been getting upset a lot lately, so you've got to be careful. What kind of stuff have you been getting upset about? My, uh, just little stuff in the kitchen. You know how that is? In the is? kitchen. Mm. Yeah, where you're something supposed to be where you put it, and it's not there anymore because you ate all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, hate, I hate that. <laughs> it happened with ice cream last night. I went back to get it, and there was, it wasn't gone. I looked all around finally. I found the container in the trash can. <laughs> so, you know, it man, was, that's that's a shifty little leprechaun can't come in there. Yeah, well, I, at least they cleaned up after themselves. Well, I think that's part of the issue is that you're doubly offended. You're offended that it happened, and you're offended that you caused it to happen and don't remember it. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's three things that you don't remember it either. Um, <laughs> So you get offended pretty quickly in my kitchen. Uh, that's all I know. <laughs> so I don't go in there that often. It's just, just too stressful. Commercials and uh, 
that pause on that TV is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. People take, don't appreciate that. Here's a new way to, and I'm going to stop talking after no, this. No, please. But I, I, this is what I've learned about Jeopardy, is uh, for all of you people that are like me, that are normal Jeopardy fans that watch, watch it religiously. But I always, I'm so irritated by the commercials that they do. Like they go for five minutes mm. between before final Jeopardy. It's five minutes of commercials. Right. And it drives, it's not right. So what I've learned to do is I don't start watching Jeopardy till 7.30. Ken Jennings does not appear in my home until 7.30. <laughs> and at 7.30, I have programmed it, I have taped it, and I start to replay it, um, which is a great way to do it. Um, and so what happens is that when something happens, you just hit pause and go back and come back. And, and then, of course, you can fast forward glory. through and, and mute and fast forward <laughs> through the advertisements. And wow, that yeah. really makes enjoy and jeopardy a lot better. Yeah, so that's my tip of the night. You know, it's pretty, technology is pretty amazing these days. We can even do that with our antenna now. It comes into a little really? box. So I can let a show start and hit pause and then do stuff for a few minutes. Give myself a good little 15 minute cushion or something. Yeah. And then start it back up and then fast forward the commercials when they come. You know, we talk about and that's how. the antenna on the roof. Yeah, we talk about the good old days, but we don't think about things like that. Right. What a pain in the ass it was to <laughs> have to watch those stupid commercials, the same ones every night. Like it, oh. I will go get Geico now. <laughs> After 400,000 times of seeing that little lizard, I want Geico today. I don't understand. Just go out and sign up for Geico and Aflac the same day. Yeah, exactly. Like... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Give me the duck. Is there, did they have a goat? Are they selling? No, no, that's just uh, uh, Reggie. Sell themselves. Well, who's that guy at West that sells himself? So, uh, Dion, uh, not, uh, not Reggie Sanders. Sanders. Yeah. He was a good ball player. <laughs> Dion Sanders. Uh, he was on selling a book the other day. <laughs> what a great salesman! Yeah. But he doesn't have anything. He just sales. <laughs> He's just in sale. Well, what do you sell? Well, we're in, we sell sales. <laughs> Good Lord. I guess this is a good time to tell y'all that we're looking for ad sponsors. <laughs> so people, people can speed through all the trouble. <laughs> that, is, that is funny how you see. And the, some of these ads, I'm thinking, really, they must have gotten like third graders or something to write them. They're so terrible. I mean, they're not, I mean, it's like, who did you give this to? And they looked at it and said, this is a good idea. Exactly. I, I don't understand so many of them. And if they had a thing where you could send in and, and pay them money not to show the ad, <laughs> I, would buy, really I would really <laughs> provide that service. I would buy that service. I will buy Geico if you promise I don't have to see that commercial if, anymore. <laughs> if you will publicly kill that little lizard. <laughs> we need a cage match between the Aflac duck and the, and the lizard, gecko lizard. The Geico lizard. The, uh, oh, what was it? I had something. I lost it. Oh, well, that Aflac duck will do it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it'll just overwhelm the whole evening for me. God, I was about to say something. I lost it. Yeah. Commercial related? Or? I guess we get, uh, I'm not going to get it back. <laughs> uh, don't worry. But, Look at the new feature on our wall here. To, how You brought this. I brought that. We went to the Art Hive, which we've mentioned a few times on, uh, what, is, what is that road? Spring Hill Road. Spring Hill Road, mm -hmm. right up by the park. Art Hive. The Art Hive. Uh, they had a uh, puff and paint class, or not a class, <laughs> but a puff and paint. They call it that? Yeah. Boy, we are wow. future people. Puff and, <laughs> puff and paint event. And me and my friend Daryl went. And Daryl, uh, we had just seen Mr. Moore before he went down there. So he said he was thinking about you. So he did a 
Jack. I don't know why he painted me instead of you. I guess because I was sitting. He knows you there. a lot better. He's, <laughs> you, obviously, or <laughs> there's obviously a lot of us. Each of us is in there, <laughs> and a little bit of Daryl, I believe. <laughs> Nathan's eyes. <laughs> That's well, awesome. Yeah, it was very, it was yeah very I, I, I do believe that is the beginning of a, a career for Daryl if he wants it. And he kept wanting to write something on the shirt that I talked him out of, and he said, you know, with all the stuff you could do, you could digitally or something put, like, you know. I'm already sitting here imagining like, animating that. Like Jabber John 7 to 8.30 or, you know, whatever he put on it, yeah. Keep sending us Jabber John art. I got a nice little folder. I'm, I'm starting to get organized with my workflow on the computer and have uh, some animation dreams. This is definitely... If, if you could talk to Daryl about doing two more of those. <laughs> <laughs> One a month, I guess. We could do a whole, a whole thing. I really like the stripes. Yeah, he was getting towards the end. I thought he was going to ruin it because you know how you finish something and it looks and then perfect you and it. you can't stop. Yeah, I do that. And I was like, oh, I, I, like, I was like, Daryl, and he's like, you know, taking another hit and the, I was like, Daryl, please stop. I know. stop. Yeah, you got to tackle artists at a certain point. Like, <laughs> there's just always that little. Bit. Well, that, that there was no stop. Like, if she had said it's an hour, then it was done. But there was no stopping. So, you were just sitting there with the paint in front of you, like you know. You just pick it up again, like you know. No, no. Yeah, he did a good job. Or do you buy the stuff to? It's forty dollars, and they give you. They have a big spread of food and all wow. the paint. And I felt bad because I don't ever paint, so I had like you know big, huge globs of paint, and I used like you know, the tiniest little bit. Why, where's your painting? I don't see it around here. Oh, anywhere. mine was a. Where, where is it? Mine was a hot mess. What? So I just painted. I just started painting colors. I didn't know then. Uh, Kirsten, who works there, is uh, very amused by my my concept that incense surrounds deer and, so, and protects them. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Keep, go on. Uh, this, uh, all the time, when I'm, like people were like, "Why do you like incense so much?" I put it on. Oh, Facebook. you brought your incense with you? No, but uh, so she read one of my Facebook things where I was talking about how if when the deer, if you can blow incense on deer, they're protected, they're like magic, like they can't be hurt by hunters or anything. Mm. So she said, you should so That's do why you've been chasing deer <laughs> through it. I was wondering what the heck was going on out there. So I was just like, I don't know what to paint. And she looked and said, well, why don't you paint one of your protected deer? And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. So I've got this huge <laughs> incense thing in one corner and this terrible looking deer. <laughs> That's awesome. Were you doing it all from memory, or did you pull up a picture of a deer? No, that's all. And I was pretty high too, so I was asked like stupid questions. You know, I just did like the child's drawing of the, you know, the side of the deer, so it just says two legs. I'm like, does the deer have only two legs, or does it have four? And oh my I, god! And everybody's like, that has four. And then some guy looked at it. And he goes, you know. And the, the deer is like, you know, it's a profile, but I put both eyes, and the guy said, you know, both, you know, this, the, you know, the deer didn't have both his eyes on the same side of So you head. did a four-eyed, <laughs> two-legged deer. I hate when people are looking, te technical people look over your shoulder and mm. make things like that. It's just nitpick. I mean, that's a nitpick. Nitpick, yeah. It's your expression, man. Oh, you know? It's uh, funny, because I was, I was painting, and somebody said, what are you painting? What do you paint? And I said something like, "Well, nobody's gonna mistake this for a photograph." And some woman, I didn't, I don't even think I ever saw her. She goes, "Fuck anybody that's looking for a photograph." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> Inspiring words. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the right crowd. <clears throat> She's probably some seventy-year-old woman. <laughs> but w one lady painted a very nice, uh, like a desert scene. That was really looked dark. They had, like the Cactuses were black and the orange backgrounds and stuff. And the guy across from me painted, and he worked hard on his. I couldn't figure out what he was doing, but it was like a road going into the distance and a big sign that said no exit. He was really proud of that. I didn't really understand what he was doing. <laughs> and his girlfriend, um, we have pictures of her. She was like so high. She was just, <laughs> she was just sitting. Her face was like she was painting, but her face looked like she was about one to second of going to sleep. I go, oh. what she paint? <laughs> she painted like a big old. Uh, it was a It was supposed to. It looked like a mouse to me, but her boyfriend and her 
husband and wife kept saying, his ears are too small. And everybody's like, leave her alone. Leave her alone. <laughs> Someone's. <laughs> but she was like holding the paintbrush. Like, he was like going to town and what the, doing something, rubbing all over. She's just <laughs> holding the paintbrush. Like, <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm imagining if I'd been there, I would have been sitting right beside you and you'd have your four-eyed, <laughs> two-legged deer over there. And I was... I'm just imagining I would paint the canvas all just like black or whatever. And then somebody would come up and be like, what is that? And I'd say, no idea. <laughs> Lex, please. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I can imagine you can paint. What's that? I can see you being a good artist. I, I'm thinking about taking it up. I think you, you, you said the resident expert down there didn't start till she was 35 yeah, or something. It's like, like that, yeah. Bukowski didn't start writing poetry yeah. till he was in his 40s. There's no reason on earth why I couldn't see myself becoming a painter. At this and you point. have the, you have the confidence like to pick up a guitar. I was like you know you can't even tell how far the brush is from the you know the thing you're trying to. I mean Daryl has been painting for a long time. He was very you know knew what he was doing. It was nice watching somebody know what they were doing and then I'm like, you know, trying to I paint two little white dots and I put a little eyeball in it. This is who we have to get in there painting. That's why I asked he's him got to go. skills. He's, he's I'm a terrible drawer. That's the only problem. I can see myself becoming a world famous painter except I'm a terrible drawer. So I'd have to like come up with some kind of Jackson Pollock kind of angle or whatever. Some innovative way like yeah i uh just shot paintballs into a strainer hanging from a <laughs> string or something uh -oh, here we go okay. uh-oh uh-oh blank he's canvas he's got his pipe blank out and canvas. everything sitting up there on the cape doing caricatures for 75 dollars a piece <laughs> throw that away throw that away i don't want to ever see it again oh, it's just every week why don't they move os <laughs> The funniest thing of the whole night, God, I just remember this. I mean, we were just smoking and carrying on the, the whole day, and Daryl had a lighter with, the, with the, I mean, Daryl was like, you know, Mr. Punk Rock, you know, just, you know, just fight authority and stuff, and he had this real pretty little <laughs> lighter. It said, like, the the beach life or something with a sailboat on it. Every time I pick it up, I was like, Daryl, where the hell did you get this lighter? <laughs> Sitting there all dressed in black with his cut-off finger gloves on, talking about punk rock. Let me get that lighter going. <laughs> <laughs> sailing, sailing. I I, 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 as soon as I picked it up, I was like, where in the world did you get this lighter from? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Something happening, folks. Is it that 70-year-old woman? <laughs> Oh, I think I got this thing working. Still want me to throw it away? No, I it works. You should teach a class down there. That. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do a whole special Jabber John appearance for the next puff and paint at art hive. And yeah. something else very a deer. Oh I do a deer. <laughs> That's pretty good. Look at that. Look it's got two legs just like mine. <laughs> <laughs> So they do have two legs. Well, I put both eyes on the same side. <laughs> Lights hitting it, huh? No, it's perfect. You can see it? It's good. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Well, <laughs> got some new Jabber John art. I know. I'll have to scan that in. <laughs> That's awesome. But one cool thing, that people really should go check this out. Kirsten did, uh, I think it was eight portraits of important females in Stanton. And I mean, the beautiful paintings that look really cool. I felt bad because I didn't know who any of the ladies were. I felt mm. pretty shameless. There are portraits. Of like a, it's um, drawings by who? They're all orange and red and yellow, but like, you can tell exactly if you knew the person. You know, who you, did them? Did she Kirsten do? Them? Did Kirsten them, yeah. did them. Yeah. Oh, she had she had done them before, and they're on display mm -hmm. in there. Mm. I have to check that That's out. That's cool. Yeah. But I was like, I was like, oh, I feel bad. So I don't know who any of them are. She's like, shh, because one of them's right over there. The lady was there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd recognize any prominent figures of Stanton. I know, it made me unless feel they bad. were like teachers or something that I would know know of. But 
I know. Just like the Barbie movie, all we know is the men in town. <laughs> <laughs> well, Woodrow Wilson and the Statler That's brothers. Right. That's about it. <laughs> the Kens. Mm -hmm. Now, what did y'all think about uh, the oh, Latin soul that replaced by the Sweet Addies? Oh, I hadn't heard that. Yeah, they said they went in to buy the cooking equipment and ended up they talked them into buying it. So the whole they, thing. They own two restaurants now. Wow. Well, I was never went to Sweet Addie's, so I don't have anything to compare it to. Right. I've heard good things about both of them. It's exceptional. Are they going to try to just keep it Sweet they Addie's? They said they're keeping the same, all the people that work there, and they're going to try to just keep it exactly the way it was. Wow. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing really Is wrong that with Sweet Addie's, like, was that the pancakes the and the waffles? waffles yeah. And really good chicken tenders. Big old, oh, they're special. I'm, I'm <laughs> glad those are still in stands. Are they open for lunch? They, I think their hours like Wednesday through Sunday. They had a little, they had some real short, you know, brunch maybe type of hours. But I think they did say they might open it up a little bit more. That's cool. And Marino's opens up next month. I'll Friday, soft opening. We're excited yeah, about that. Yeah, it is that. exciting. I'm and their, their hours for their soft opening are 8 to 8. So that means they're looking at breakfast. I'm starting to, uh, I'm a, I'm, I've got a breakfast theory I'm going to work on. A breakfast uh, theory? Well, it's a, a once or twice a week, depending on how good they are. But I'm assuming they're going to have a good breakfast. But there's not a, you know, it's hard to find a good breakfast place. And I want to support Marino's, of course. And uh, so I think I'm going to get somebody to come by and pick me up, and I'll go buy their breakfast if they'll eat breakfast with me. So oh, that's that's great. have different people come through. And, uh, yeah, I might have my own radio show. Or <laughs> Here we are, live from Marino's. No, I, I don't want to show up when I have to. I just want to show up whenever I have a hankering for Right. Sausage gravy. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping. I'm just rooting for their sausage gravy. <laughs> That's how Mr. Blackburn and I used to rate a place. We, in fact, that was a mission we had for several years of traveling to find the perfect sausage gravy. Uh huh. And it's a pretty big bullseye on sausage gravy. It's sort of hard to mess it up. Well, yeah, well, it's not true at all. It is. Oh yeah. Sausage, how, well, so what I mean, sausage gravy should come from people that were cooking sausage all for breakfast all morning and they have one big old thing with just just making the gravy mm. it's not something you take. i guess i just say that because the first time i ever made it it was so delicious it, it, it was, it, it, no there was no i mean learning it curve. is it is hard to screw up if you take the time to make it mm -hmm. most a lot if it comes out of a can or there's a the lot can of and, process. Well, the worst one was when you'd get some and the sausage were bits of, and squares. Oh, goodness. Not, yeah, that's not crumbles. Not right. And you just, it's that first bite and you realize, oh, this is not even real sausage. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you're out there listening, if you brown sausage, take some raw sausage, brown it in a pan. Once it's nice and brown, sprinkle flour over it and then pour it and then Cook that for a second so you get that flour taste out of there and then just dump in some milk, bring it to a simmer. It'll thicken because of the flour. It's going to be amazing. Yep. But I hear what you're saying. There's all kinds of processed, weird versions and stuff that yeah. aren't really doing it for real. Yeah. And they have the cans of salsa. I'm not a, saying there's anything wrong with those cans of, for the liquid. Uh, they're all right. I'm not saying you have to start from scratch with that but your your idea is the way to do it mm -hmm. that that way you can put some love in there yeah while you're cooking yeah no do you put it on biscuits or toast yeah or just cook biscuits, some biscuits 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 I mean, if you do just what i said it's so simple and it's so delicious mm -hmm. I, I, yeah how many times have we heard that? And if, <laughs> and if you have somebody that can make a good biscuit, because I... Yeah, that's, that, no, that's not, a whole I'm other story. I'm not a good biscuit maker. Did Nana make biscuits? Not so much. Mm -hmm. They did rolls. How about Mama? Mama. I mean, they could do a biscuit, but they I, they didn't emphasize biscuits. They mm -hmm. were more rolls. Right. Sweet rolls. rolls. They like sugar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a question in the chat for you here. Um, Saul wants to know wanted me to ask you dad where to get 
halgramite bait. Now the halgramite, I believe, if I'm, I don't know if Helgamite. I'm saying right. I got Helgamite. a picture and they're terrifying. Oh, he's got a picture and they're terrifying. Are you showing the show? I'm going to. That's the the larvae, larvae, larvae. Larvae of the Lar larvae of the dragonfly, right? Uh, actually, I think it's called a dobson fly. Oh, yeah. It's it's not the dragonfly per se, but it's same idea. Mm -hmm. It's a larval form, and it's it's just a, like a giant caterpillar, but they have these big pincers. Have you seen Terrifying. It? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I get the heebie -jeebies. Now, I've spent the, mor <laughs> I've, I've spent the morning on your river, the Shenandoah River, um, catching Helgramites. You just, but he's, to answer his question, mm -hmm. you lift, they lift rocks, and they are scurrying around, and you have to grab them behind the pincher. And nope. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Is he asking well, what to feed them? Will they bite you? No, that's what he, you use them. Oh, yeah. That's what those pinchers nope. do. All right, I think that's enough of that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to run anybody off. But yeah, the Helga, and they're big. You know, they're that long. Oh, my goodness. And they're thick. Are they? Uh, really? They're not little. I'm not picturing the right thing. And though. the thing that. So the, you're just looking for a young one for bait? Well, or you use no, big you ones? know, the big ones, the bigger the Helgramite, the bigger the bass. Oh, my goodness. Bass just can't stop. Will trout them. eat them? Oh, yeah. They'll bite them? The only difference is trout are colder water fish, so they're not used, they don't know Helgramites. Helgramites are a warm water larva. But you have them in your backyard in the, oh. on the Shenandoah. That's Lex not, is your source, Saul. That's he, not terrifying he, at all. He's, he's, he says he'd be happy to get you as many as but you want. I'm not worried. <laughs> I think Saul can pull it off, but it does take some. Uh, Are uh, they in Middle River? There's not that many. It's a, it's they're actually a good sign of the health of the stream. Hmm. Uh, that, that you don't see them all the time, and very few people. I think I, I've seen them swarm. What not the Dobson fly? Oh, when those they, things. When they come <laughs> off of the water, these Helgramites literally turn into a flying dragon and just go up into the air. What's the? But what's they're the, bigger than a than a dragonfly. Oh wow! They're huge, and they have ter terrifying pin, pinch uh, mandibles. The the butterfly version, the flying yeah, version. Yeah, let me find. Yeah, a let's picture. see the flying version. Yeah, they're, they're, they're trigger warning. I don't know if they are pinchers by then <laughs> or you. just the remnants of them, but I don't think they're as dangerous. I don't think they're as pinchy. What's the metamorphosis like from being this underwater? I mean, that's just mind blowing in and of itself. This is an underwater creature that lives under rocks in the river that then become flying air creatures. Yeah, a whole lot of there insects do that. Oh no, I know exactly, oh those are horrifying. <laughs> you get one of those on the side of your tent, you're never sleeping in that thing again. <laughs> they're Cronenberg. big, aren't they? They're big, they're I'm giant. glad somebody else is on the no, ins no crazy insects train <laughs> this is because this is, they're creepy to me. I am that not is, an insect person. Right? Now, I'm not, I'm now not. you know who it is. It's a Dobson fly. Yeah. So, not, so, not, not, it's, it's close to a stone fly. Dobson fly. The, the Dobson fly is even bigger than a stone fly. And Does all the dragonfly have a similar yeah. Yeah, it has young a, stage? Yeah. They do have that large, the, the, so many of them. Well, you know, all the mayflies here are about mayfly hatches. Mm -hmm. Mayflies are for trout fishermen. They come off in these schools of b bugs, but they spent most of their life on the rocks, traveling, you know, being a larva. And then one day they just come to the surface and they sprout these wings out now, and fly away. Then they, they live <laughs> for about three or four hours. The whole time they're in the air, they don't do any eating. All they do is have sex. For th three hours and then they die. And then they just, they just, they don't really die, they just fade away. <laughs> <laughs> they just kind of say, that's it. Like they just, young. they just, <laughs> <laughs> they just kind of slip down into the water yeah, and, yeah. and start over. <laughs> Uh, Would, yeah. wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be fun to be hiking down by the river and get attacked by a swarm of sexual b b b flies? Oh my God, they're having sex all around. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like fun to you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, it's just I've another reason is... people go out into the woods and experience nature. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so slow down this 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 transformation from an underwater under a. St I mean, you can't get any further from the air than underwater under a stone with gills. With you get, well, I guess so. They yeah. Got to. Yeah. Interesting. And then they become a winged air creature. No cocoon? Um, no. No cocoon? No. You got you to gotta slow this down for me, that, that metamorphosis. Uh, well, like you said they come to the surface, sprout wings, and fly. Yeah. I mean, the wings had How formed. The wings have formed, but they've never been used. They were encased. You know, they just grew, but when he was a little larva, he didn't have any wings at all. He was just a larva. But, and a lot of these insects, when you think about them, well, you think about a mayfly, for instance. I'm not sure I know a mayfly. Well, it's just a little, I mean, you can hardly see them. They're real small fly. I mean, they're, they have wings that you can see, but, the, you know, they're not a noticeable insect out there. But. Uh, trout fisher are known because they use them for bait. You mimic the fly and toss the fly in and it, the fish thinks it's a dead. What happens, cause what happens is they have sex and literally they just fall back to the water and the fish eat them. Wow. And so it's there's a, a whole of circle of life going on. So, uh, but that's true of all kinds of insects that have that pattern. But when you think about it, butterflies and moths, they, you know, they have a, a larval stage too. Mm -hmm. But they cocoon for their transformation. Right. Uh, whereas, yeah. Um, um, yeah, the water ones. I don't know if I've ever seen like a Helgamite mid transfer, like growing wings. Like, I don't oh, know. look at this one, like, has little. Sprouting well, wings. Well, what you thing. will see, and what you probably have seen, like, is casings, like, like a dragonfly or a fly. Uh, the casing, they'll climb up on a branch and be all wet, and as they dry out, they form this case, and when it opens up, they become the in, they come out as an insect. So, so that's that, the that's cocoon. the end. That's that. Uh, uh, that is their cocoon gotcha. phase, but it's not as long. God, that is so. Trippy. It's like a turtle if it grew wing. Excuse me? <laughs> Would the turtle shell be its cocoon and then it could grow wings and it could fly away? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Right. Yeah, they start as turtles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's turtles all the way down. <laughs> turtles are an amazing animal. Oh, my goodness. That's doesn't even make any sense. No, it's turtle soup. Is that really turtles? Or that's not really no, it's really turtles. Wow. Isn't that usually made out of snapping turtles? Is that the one people eat the most? Well, I don't know what people use for... I don't think so. I think people will try to get rid of the snapping turtles, or the ones you end up getting rid of. But uh, as far as eating, I don't, I don't think they're any better at eat, for eating. Do people eat like a box turtle for turtles? No. Yeah, I don't think so. No. They're too small too and there's no, no meat in there. Mm. Too sweet. You tried. Don't you say too sweet? Oh, I meant personality wise. Uh. <laughs> <You're just laughs> <too laughs> <angry>. <laughs> like, Woo! Maybe for dessert, but <laughs> not a main course. Slice me, slice, slice me off a part of piece of that turtle pie. It's my favorite. <laughs> All right, so I'll. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give you a little bit more info here on how to get some helgamites and similar things in these parts that I know just from my, my upbringing. Dad used to have a, uh, a net between two long sticks. So it's just two long sticks with a net in between them. There's one in my and shed right now. There's he one can, in his shed That right he now can have. That you can have. Ding, ding, ding. Winner, winner. So what he, what he would do is he'd go out there in the river and place one stick here and one stick here and the nets in between them and then you have his sons run towards them scooching their feet on the bottom of the river digging everything up and towards the net that's down river and then he would bring it up scoop it up and in there would just be a treasure trove of bait wow 
Or if it was a good, it was a good run. Sometimes we'd catch the fish and wouldn't have to go fish. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, you were pretty good. You'd kick them running. I, I, I think I was one of the best at that of all time. At least that's how I felt at the time. How yeah. would you do that if you were by yourself, or is that just a you need sons for that kind of? Yeah, it was. It was not nearly as effective. Sometimes you'd like throw a rock or something. Other times you'd lay. You'd get those the poles stuck good, and then mm. you'd get up and run down and then grab them. And right. So there was all types of things you could. But uh, yeah, I was always thought you were pretty, really pretty good at. Well, my uh, feet naturally stick out like that. Yeah, so, you, like I was sort of made. I was going to say you design. have a natural clumsiness yep, that, uh, yep. that comes <laughs> that with that, the that skill, <laughs> with that skill. Saul, in this regard, I will be your son <laughs> if you need an assist. <laughs> He's got one in the shed. Uh, I know a place we can go. Let's let's get some of these. Now guys. you might not catch children whites, but you'll catch some bait. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like what kind of stuff would you get coming out of there? Oh, that's what was so much fun. You never knew you never what you. You know, that's how you learn about a river. You, you get in there and pull that stuff out and see what's living in there. Is all of it pretty good bait? Well, or are there things that wouldn't? Yeah, there are things that they wouldn't want to eat. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of good bait in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, little fish and stuff. But you couldn't. Some of them are beautiful to put on a hook, and others are too little or too big or whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, but the larva, yeah, most of that you don't use. It's not the right size. It doesn't fit the hook, or mm -hmm. you squish them, or you. Know. What size hook do you want for trout? I would say offhand, just depends on how you're fishing and what you're fishing with. Like if you were out there at that uh, pond you're talking about, you wanted, I'd want to get as small as I can, so I'd use what they call a salmon egg hook, a real small little hook. We were, we're using one we're that a, had three hooks on it, but it was tiny. Is that good? Yeah, that's a treble hook. That's not as good. Um, no, I want one. I want a one thing hook. But that's just my prejudice too, so I don't know. But you want the bait to be, the, you want the hook to be covered by the bait so the fish doesn't feel the metal. Mm. If the fish can touch that metal, he'll drop it. But So, uh, you know, I try to use the salmon egg and use a couple pieces of corn and try to cover it completely. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I wish we'd brought some I, corn I, or something. I didn't under, Everybody out there, was power baiting, well, including us. And if we'd why, just brought something different, if we'd brought a can of corn, I feel like we would have eaten but some But why fish. wouldn't y'all get any bites at all? Unless y'all must have... Uh... We were just a l late. Everybody was out there for like 40 minutes before us, and it was just that quick. Really? Wow. You mean the rest of the day people weren't catching fish? No, like at a certain point, like you're looking around the pond. It wasn't like everybody else was catching them and we weren't. It just seemed like... Really? No, I didn't. That's not. I thought the idea was that everybody was could catch them, but y'all couldn't. And, I and granted, there was some of that. We were seeing other other people. It wasn't crazy, but I, they definitely. By the time we got there, the best spots were taken. Yeah, and that makes sense. That, now, what does it mean, power baiting? Power bait is like you buy it in a can at the store, uh, okay. and it looks it's neon in color. Oh, it's okay, like, I know. It yeah. looks like play doh, right? Or yeah. something you. It's just like play doh. Mm -hmm. Is that good stuff? Uh, it's effective, mm -hmm. especially with trout. With uh, a lot of the old timers use it on the lakes, so you know if they're using it, they they've had good success with so it. So in a river, is it almost always moving bait, lures, spinners, that kind of stuff? Like you wouldn't use a would you use power bait in a river? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, just put a little weight on it and it rolls around through the bottom and that's perfectly fine. Do fish smell that stuff? Yep. Power bait definitely. They, they have noses? Yep. They, have, they smell well, underwater. Well, they have olfactory senses all through their bodies almost. They can sense things. Um, I think he's making that part up. Sounds. <laughs> they... Uh, you know, they can they can hear and uh, they can hear things that uh, that that aren't sounds. 
I just made that up. (laughs) 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 I'm sorry. That's all right. Because I guess underwater, the fish really can't see that. They have to have other senses that they can know where stuff is. I guess their smell. And their well, some fish can body. see very, very well underwater. Even in like old murky water? They well, can see. no, it's muddy and they just see the mud, so they don't depend as much. Right. You're, you're right. There's, but other fish, I mean, a trout has wonderful eyesight. He can see a little movement. It's more movement than anything else. Right. Mm-hmm. They're attracted to something for food or something that's a predator that they're going to avoid. But, uh, now, when I was painting my deer, the guy, well, the guy across from me said some fish has both eyes on the same side of its head. What's flounder. It? it has both eyes on the same side? Yeah. The, the, Looks like yeah. it was invented by Picasso. Soul, uh, soul, any of those so- ocean fish that lay on the bottom of the ocean, see, there's no reason to have an eye <laughs> If you're laying on the bottom of the oh, ocean, there's no reason. So they're flat fish. The flounder is a flat fish. So its eyes have both moved around to the same side of its head. So we eat flounder, right? Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. So why are we eating something with two mm. eyes on the same side of its head? Yes, sir. Flounder, brother. <laughs> I guess, yeah. There's, there's a whole lot of stuff out there you don't want to hear about that you eat. <laughs> Man, if I was somewhere and f- swimming around and caught something with two two eyes on the same, oh my God! Not to change the subject, but I had the grossest thing that I had to throw in the trash. No, all right, let's do this. Oh my God, this is whoever did this, or if it's a mistake or a joke, whatever. Food line needs to be penalized. I what? went to Food Lion and I was getting some stuff and I could smell the fried chicken. Mm. Yeah, and so I said, oh, I'm going to get some, you know, the already made fried chicken. So I look in this thing, it's got four breasts in it, like perfect, I get it home. Take it out, it's the breast with either a wing or a leg or something still attached to it. And I was like, what the hell is this? I'm like holding the thing out and I'm eating it. And I was like, oh, this is grossing me out. It's like something, you know. You're not used to. It's like if you, you know, if you, it's just an extra thing on there that's not supposed to be there. So I threw that one in the trash. Got the other one. I said, "Oh my God, they all have it." When did they start making chicken breasts with a? I couldn't even tell if it was the wing or the leg. Oh my God, it gives me a nightmare. I wish you saved it. one so we can inspect it. Oh man, it, so it was so. Well, about. it sounds like the leg thigh thing that you buy. Right. Yeah. But you would recognize that. Yeah. Well, you would think, but I'm not so sure. Look at the boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and the, the, you know, the, the crispy outside, I bit into it, and then I was like, oh, I just can't even eat it with that extra appendage. Like, stick the it out. The extra <laughs> appendage that looked like a leg? I couldn't tell if it was a wing or a leg or what. Because it had all the crust and stuff on it. And I wanted about to tear into it oh to see what it God. was. Oh, my God. Have you got any more of that? I want to look at it. You should have taken a picture of it. sounds kind of good. Yeah, definitely should have got it. You have a YouTube it. show. You know, we need visual aid here. I guess you go over there and just ask them where they keep the freaky stuff. And they'll give it to you. <laughs> I'll take it with Kyle. <laughs> and last week. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that happened. I was so upset that I went, just like threw away mm. three and a half what I thought were chicken breasts, but really. Well, next time, call me and I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah, because I think you, you just should have gone up and visited I Dad. Because I always like to get the thigh, the wing thigh combination. I thought I always cooked with that. They were the cheaper cut, and I always cooked with those. So uh, yeah. maybe one, it's one oh, man. John Dodson's in the chat says it's an airline chicken breast. It has the wing drumette attached. Oh, what oh is my it God! It has a name, John. The airline Come on. chicken. Does breast. he, John? Do you like it? it this the whole <laughs> visual thing made me upset. And what is it again? Airline chicken breast. It has the wing drumette attached. Wing drumette. to the breast. God, I'm glad you've heard of it. I, nobody I've told Wendy. about it. No, Wendy heard. is like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nobody I've talked to has heard it. about it. Huh. I didn't know anything about it. Well, it sounds delicious to me. That's all I'm saying. Has I don't understand it? why it would offend you in any way. Because when you get a chicken breast, you want a it's whole... It's crusty chicken. Yeah, but you want that meat. You don't want like, a, something slappy upside the head. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> meat and right, mayflies. You, you put it that way, I get your point. Yeah. You don't um, want anything you can't explain. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's... <laughs> 
That's happened to other nine nuggets or nine guarantee. A lot of that happens. What is it called? The streamlined chicken breast? Airline. 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 He says the drumhead is naturally attached to the chicken breast. God, he, I guess that makes sense. How is he so It's just smart. like us. Like, he, here's my he, breast. He here's my chef? wing. It's just, you take that whole thing. Did he say if he liked it or not? Did not he, yet. Has he tasted but, it? Yeah. I, I think that'd be chicken. pretty common. So what part is the drumette? I was like, I, I couldn't tell what it was. It was the I wing guess Maybe the that's leg. what freaked you out. Because it's like a little mini leg. Yeah, but it was just like hanging off the breast. Like, what the hell? So it's like the shoulder and then the wing thing is, is mm -hmm. there. You know, so like the, what you would call a wing yeah, like when you eat wings. Luckily, you, I have my own body here to get my brain around <laughs> what we're talking about. But it does make perfect suckers. sense now that I see it all laid out. <laughs> Nate is doing right. this. All of a sudden, wings sprout and he flies away. <laughs> 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 and he has sex for three hours. <laughs> and, and, dies. and then he just died. He's <laughs> like James D. <laughs> <laughs> he comes tumbling down I the love steps. That. He's dead. <laughs> Somebody eat that chicken wing off of it. <laughs> so, Saturday night, we're having a wonderful time camping out there. This is really fun. Joe and Hunter and fam came out on Friday for a nice dinner. I made some. You know, that's the sound of it. There, that's this is this is recorded live from, from our spot in Verona. The uh, <clears throat> had a great dinner, although I got it. If Joe, if you're watching, uh, I'll tell you more later. But I feel like I failed the smash burgers. I had I had a big yeah. I, was, I wanted to make everybody these awesome smash burgers because I made them so good at home but I failed because I used too big of patties to start with mm. they needed to be smaller so they could get flatter and then they get these crunchy parts yes. that yes. makes it it's That's the crunchy good. parts that make it I used too big of balls to start with so they just look like smushed burgers and had none of the things you want from a smash burger that, so that's just an aside but then, so the story I'm about to tell is Saturday night, we we're playing some, some poker and uh, eating some chips and dip. And I grabbed a chip, put it in my mouth, bit oh, into boy. it, and it was like, <sighs> all of a sudden I was like, oh no, there's like some glass in the dip or something. I was like, what is going on? What the hell just happened? So I didn't know what it was. And I couldn't find it in my mouth. I think I accidentally swallowed it. I was a little nervous about it. A little bit later, I go to the bathroom, and on the way there, my tongue is feeling around in my mouth, and I realize that it's just one of my teeth just oh my just gosh. fell apart inside my mouth. I was just like feeling this mm. huge recess with my tongue back there. I come back from the bathroom, and they're all still sitting there, happy at the table, and I am just a psychic trauma mess. I'm just like it didn't hurt or anything. It didn't really hurt, but my tongue just felt this crazy empty space and jagged parts it was like my tooth just fell apart in my in my head so that happened wow and you swallowed it i think i swallowed it <clears throat> so that was you know I, and i it was it was interesting because i just was not going to be myself again <laughs> like <laughs> like i was I, I was gone i'm this new thing now i'm this this <laughs> just this mess sitting across from you trying to play some poker my new nickname by the way I, I think the only hand I won was on it with a pair of twos so I'm, I'm now chipped twos <laughs> is my poker <laughs> name I hope that doesn't stick I mean the good the reason I can tell this story so comfortably is because I did have an emergency trip to the dentist yesterday and I got a temporary crown on there now they were able to save the tooth I don't need a root canal or any of the oh, worst case well, that's possibilities. Wonderful. So I'm back. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That was scary. It's very scary. Mm -hmm. It was, it was I, I feel like, I don't know, the, one of the fascinating things to me about that was just that psychic trauma or whatever of how, like, I just was a mess and couldn't get past it. I feel like... It seems like for for some reason I just get the feeling you were putting too much uh, import into the significance of your tooth. Okay, it, it go was on. A, it, well, it was just a tooth. Go on, I like the I like this way of thinking. <laughs> well, you know, 
you're talking to someone who doesn't use teeth. <laughs> right, right. And I haven't used teeth in a long time. Do you have no teeth? I have no teeth. I don't, I don't even know if I've ever really thought about this yeah. too much. I mean, I've been through so many dental experiences that I could write several horror books oh, about it. Oh, man. And uh, so, you know, I know about teeth and I know about their loss very much, but there came a point in my life where I just said, I don't have enough left to worry about. And, and I keep going back for the same things. My teeth were just not very good. Mm -hmm. And I... I didn't take great care of them, but that wasn't the, you know, I did brush my teeth at night and things like that, but I just had bad, I had bad teeth mm -hmm. and uh, weak teeth. Uh, got, well, I lost two, the two front lower teeth when I was 10 years old playing football. That's what started. Got, that weak in the whole foundation <laughs> of things? Or? I just think I, it was a sign that I had weak teeth mm -hmm. <laughs> from the very beginning because, you know, there were different issues, but... It was always, a baseball injury? Or? I got kicked. I think it was football or mm -hmm. might have been. It was a, or playing in the backyard. I don't Did know. you get fake ones when you were little? I've had all kinds of partials. Right. Uh, here's, I have a whole Hall of Fame of different partials <laughs> over the years. And you lost. Curiosity cabinet. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Yeah, my dad, when he was, I think, about 10, too, they were wrestling his teeth got hooked on somebody's shirt and pulled his two teeth out. We mm. thought that was the coolest thing when he would take his two teeth out and they'd just be on this wire thing. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I went through high school with the partials and then... Uh, so what? So that was just, uh, like he says... Well, like I had a, a, just a small little partial in the front, but yeah, then so later yeah. on I had to get them in different... I had two different partials. And then it was just false teeth and... And then I finally just said, I don't even think I want to. I have false teeth. I wear them for funerals, and no, I don't. So you have no teeth in your mouth? I have not one tooth. Not one tooth. God, no. I, never even I didn't that. even know that either. I'm yeah. your son. Yeah, isn't that weird? It is weird. How well, long has that been the case? Oh, probably about 10 years. Just 10 years. Um, I have, so your yeah. partials up till then? Yeah. And then I had a whole lower plate, and uh, you always seem to eat everything naturally. Yeah, the, uh, the technology must be pretty impressive. The only thing I, the only thing I had to give up was corn on the cob mm -hmm. and peanuts, and uh, peanuts. Oh yeah, because yeah, they get in, just in there. Yeah, they. I just can't chew them, and I. Uh, but the crumbs get up into the partial, and I have to take it out. But mm -hmm. it just doesn't work. It's not the chips it, and stuff. Not the same. I can eat them, but it's not the same. I have to wait for them to melt a little bit and mm -hmm. crunch them. But yeah, you know, I have my different techniques. But I think in some ways I I can taste more because hmm. teeth don't have any taste. So it's only the <laughs> Yeah, you know, taste buds around the teeth. I've got so. more room in my mouth for taste. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but the worst thing, like what you were saying with that tooth, then your tongue cannot stop. Oh, it was. It's like you have to feel it. Every I was I was five a mess seconds. until I went to the dentist yesterday, and as traumatic of an experience as that was, I still came out of there basically whole again. But it was fascinating <laughs> how I couldn't. I mean, on just so many levels, like going back through like my bad habits and how I just chew ice all the time and I don't brush my teeth enough so I'm being hard on myself I'm just like shaming myself <laughs> for this hole in my mouth and my tongue can't stop going to and I'm just like I'm not myself like like if, <clears throat> it's just Damn. interesting how that can become such a preoccupation and now mm -hmm. if I was at a party I just wouldn't be at the party fully I wouldn't be with if if I hadn't gone to the dentist yesterday, I would just still be a bit of a mess here yeah. talking to you guys now. You'd probably yeah. be more boring than you are tonight. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Not not about to genuinely laugh and or it's, it's all gonna be nervous <laughs> yeah, laughter. Yeah, it'd be fake laughter. <laughs> yeah, fake laughs, nervous laughs, awkward silences. That's so funny, Ellen. <clears throat> yeah. But, but it is, uh, sorry. Like the, and the tooth thing, too, there's nothing you can do. Right. I've had one time like a year ago, a little part of one of my teeth broke off, and I bit into it, too. And I could see where it, it was just like a little tiny piece on the front, and they just put like a little filling or something in there. But 
man, you just can't leave it alone. It's just like, and you can't really do anything, man. Like, this needs to be fixed immediately, but you just have to, like, wait. Like, you know, <laughs> how much longer do the dentist open? What's taking so long? <laughs> I ordered this, uh, it wasn't very much, but I ordered this camera, which is, the reason I really ordered it is because I came up with a few more uses for it after I thought of the first inspiration, which was my tooth. But it connects to my phone, and it's a long, like, snake. It's, like, 20 feet of bendable plastic or whatever so you can like run it into your drain or something and go down there and see like what's clogging or run it back behind this wall to see what's going on in the unfinished part of the house or, or I have several different uses for this but i bought it so i could you know diy check out my tooth and see what's going on in there so i get the package and i open it up and i connect it to the phone and it's awesome how it works if you need this for anything anybody's welcome to borrow it it has a light on it too? it has a light on it too and you can connect a magnet to it like if you need to get down to a place where you dropped a screw or something you can just see it oh yeah that has all types of all kinds of it has a hook house. attachment that you can put on it but i get it and then I couldn't bring myself to look at it in my mm -hmm. mouth. I was, I was just like, no, you know, I can't do this. I, I, I even like got it up this okay, close yeah. to my face. And I'm like, I can't. I can't do it. I just, yeah. just a mess. You should have just got a piece of that super bait and put it in there. <laughs> like to cover it up. Yeah, that would work. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> But that's, you know, that's the kind of thing, like, <laughs> when you're out and, you know, when you're at, at a party or something, I don't know, like, you, you always have to keep in mind, especially if you have, like, a rough exchange with somebody or a rough interaction that's unsettling, you have no idea what might be going on in their bodies their that mouth. made them <laughs> made them act like uh, that. Like, it's, you just never know what people might be going through. Like, there's yeah, stuff true. that could be happening that just makes you not yourself makes yeah. you a bit of a mess and makes it's it's yes you're that's a very wise thing to be yeah that's very true mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. yeah we're all going through things mm -hmm. and you know it's not really proper to just say could i take a look at your teeth before we get started <laughs> 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 we don't, 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 for our next party, we're setting. We, we've hired a doctor. Yeah, Each we have person's a dentist. Going to be screened on the way yeah. through. If they do have an issue, there will be a professional doctor to console them and let them know that that's fixable. And yeah. don't worry, I, I don't need to get close to you because I've got this special camera. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got it. We got it. <laughs> Any other spots need me to check? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. I've never heard anybody that's needing to go to the dentist, they buy a tool to look inside their own mouth. No, no. Like, can, you like can you imagine? I would, I would yeah. get a mirror. I didn't know, how, I didn't know if, I, if I was going to be able to get into a dentist anytime soon. <laughs> When I called my regular uh, dentist. Just makes you wonder where it happened. You had to go to a proctologist. <laughs> well, <laughs> what, what we'd be talking about now. I think the camera works for that, too. <laughs> There's another rough image. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you, any of y'all borrows it and uses it for that, uh, you can keep oh, it. Oh, Just... Lord, have mercy. <laughs> When, when, I, when my car broke down a couple of weeks ago, I had a dentist appointment that day, and I called. No, they, I'm sure they thought I was lying, but I said, "Can I make another appointment?" She goes, "Well, you know, it's like six. You know, it's horrible to get a dentist appointment." Yeah. She said, "We'll just keep you. If anybody calls, we'll call you, and you got to be there." So, you know, just you're just waiting for somebody to cancel so you can go in. Yeah, I'm I'm terrified of the dentist. I'm terrified of the doctors, the hospital, the dent, any of this stuff. But it it it's the self-fulfilling prophecy because then it's been 11 years since I've been to the dentist and now my teeth are falling out of my head. And it's like, I don't know, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy to a certain extent. But when I called my regular dentist, like it was months away. From yeah. that. So then I'd have to use my camera or whatever. But we found a place that could get me in on an emergency basis. Well, that's went good. It was... I gotta say, I, I don't. It was. I, I probably shouldn't even talk about it, but I won't name the place by name. Trigger warning. <laughs> but it was a pretty traumatic visit. Where? I, I don't want to say the name of it. Well. But uh, they. I filled out the questionnaire online before I went in, and they 
they were like, do you have anxieties about the... And I was like, yes, like all caps, like definitely terrified of all this stuff. And then I get in there and it soon became very apparent they never read my questionnaire. It was a new dentist. They had a new assistant that were they were training. I was the oh. guinea. This assistant kept having to redo everything on me because th oh. that's not how they do it there. And it was oh, it was just. She asked you if you brought your videos with you. <laughs> it was such a mess. I did. I, I, God, that's not fair. That's, that's not good. At one point, I did go into my headphones, and because the the dentist was like, I was like, should I put my headphones on? And she was like, Yeah, that's a great idea. And she was a little bit too too encouraging yeah definitely like we'll tap you if we need anything from you whatever and then I, I put them on and the, these headphones i got these new airpod headphones and just side note the noise canceling of this stuff is a miracle like mm -hmm. it's unbelievable you get the seal right cut on that noise canceling you can't hear the outside world it's it's amazing and usually it's good and i was hoping that that would help here but then i realized well, at one point, like the assistant's in there doing all this stuff, and she and she was like, and then I'm like, oh, what? And I'm like pulling my headphones out or whatever, and and I was, I don't know, it was, I, I was more afraid not Wait, not being able to hear. Or just silence. I was listening to some Bob Dylan. Oh, because it seemed like if you just had silence, you could hear and like, you know that. Well, then like yeah. Like, oh. Uh, all right, new subject, new subject. I'm just going to get spiraled down <laughs> the more I think about how traumatic all that was. On the other hand, there was something I liked about everybody. I felt like, the way I described it was I felt like I was the car on like a Bad News Bears pit crew at a NASCAR race or something. Mm -hmm. This ragtag group of... of uh, dismiss like oh there's no way they're gonna win this race right. kind of thing but they all had good hearts <laughs> i just felt like a, i felt like a, i felt like that like they there was something that endeared me to them even though it was one of the worst experiences I hear of my you. life this is one of the worst experiences of my life i love y'all see you in six months <laughs> <laughs> three weeks actually well, for the real crown did you did, did you at least hear like benny hill music playing in the background <laughs> right it was <laughs> there was a little bit of that going on stuff crashing behind you <laughs> i've never even seen my dentist you know like you go in the I've never the, seen your dentist because the, the, because the people you know the the, the high dentist cleans you and my and then you're in the chair my dentist just always comes up behind me it never comes into the front he just sits behind me he's like hey kyle and oh. i'm like hey and he's looking you know but i never if, if, if you ran into him in the grocery store you'd have no idea oh, if, if, if he just went out and sat in the lobby i'd walk out and say hello and have a good day <laughs> i wouldn't even know who he was <laughs> I do like your, your, uh, it's very comforting the direction you were going with that, that I was putting too much significance on the power of a single tooth. Well, and also, uh, were to continue that was to say that uh, it's not, none of that's your problem. It's all genetic. Because mm. I just told you the story about my teeth. So, you know, in other words, don't ever blame yourself. You can always blame <laughs> genetics. <laughs> You can always blame me. I was reading something about how much, and I'm, I'm the king of this, something will just bother you, and it's just like, you know, like your tooth. I, can't, I, I have probably 10 examples a day where the world's ending, and then you just, the next day, you don't even remember what it was. It's like, <laughs> we just put so much importance on things, you know, like, oh, this, the world's over, you know, if a car won't start, and then like a week later, you're just driving around. What happened with your car? Nothing? What are you talking about? Like, you can't even remember the events that are so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All consuming yeah. at the moment. Yeah. I can completely relate to that. It was a quote like something of all the things that you, all the things that were going to kill you, you got through all of them and you're still here. Oh, that tooth, that huge gap, that big that you can feel. They're like, I think all of them fell out. You know, your tongue makes it feel like, you know, like your whole <laughs> side of your jaw is falling off loose. <laughs> I mean, uh, the whole rest of our life is going to be riddled with stuff like that. Mm, that's the other. Now, were you thing. afraid to eat the rest of the week? Like you're going to lose the other part of the tooth, or you just switch teeth side? I don't. It was always so comforting that when I did 
bite down on something over there that uh, it didn't hurt. So I probably did it too much. Like, <laughs> I don't know, like I would, <clears throat> if it was a sandwich or something not too crunchy right. or whatever, I'd send it over to that side just to be like, oh, okay, that's working, it's working. It's, I'm, I'm going pre- to press on luck every chance it's, I get. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> There's a there's a there's a phrase that always stuck with me. I've used it in probably more than one song called "poking the bruise," where you, <laughs> where you just want to see if it hurts. Right. Like, oh yeah, that still hurts. Still hurt. That still hurts. <laughs> I gotta press it harder. Yeah, it still hurts. Oh yeah, it still hurts. <laughs> I got two bruises now for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine is in here. He did switch to beer. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't about to drink any whiskey on that. I was like, no, I mean, what what kind of neg- negative black hole am I going to become if I start drinking whiskey now on top of this psychic <laughs> trauma? I would not subject you guys to that. No. But we heard, I heard through the grapevine that you enjoyed your Kindle while you were out there or whatever you know, it is. I love oh, my Kindle. Nice. When you were reading. Yeah. What are you reading? I'm reading The Count of Monte Cristo. That's right, man. Nice. That's camping reading right there. Mm-hmm. It's a great book. I'm really enjoying it. I'm still, it's a massive book. It's huge. But I like how fast it's moving. I'm not moving through the pages, but it, it doesn't, it's not slow. Like they're, I thought with a book that thick, a lot of times they just spend way too long describing something. And then he picked up his blue cup. Like then they spend three paragraphs talking about the cup. Uh, I don't want three paragraphs talking about the cup. I don't care how good a writer you are. Mm-hmm. I want something to happen. I want a story, <clears throat> and story wise, it's moving. A we nice only have clip. five minutes till the next commercial. <laughs> <laughs> now, how's the candle doing the sunlight? Can you adjust the brightness on it? Or like, do you have to sit in the shade, or you can sit out in the sun and read it? It's amazing, and it just looks like a piece of paper. Oh, wow. Which is really cool. But then if you're in the dark, it's glowing. Right. So it's 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 really it's really great. And just the the fact that you can keep all your books on here or whatever, to have those options. Oh, yeah. And the, to be able to magnify the font which is nice. Like some books I get now, like I need glasses to read them. Oh, that's cool. Now, can you pick like, oh, you just said you can change font and do whatever size and stuff. Mm-hmm. Make it, yep. You know, get it right where you want it. Yeah, it's it's a it's one of my favorite pieces of technology I've discovered yeah. lately. <clears throat> Tonight's show is sponsored by Kindle. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Tonight's show is sponsored by Mouth Videos. <laughs> Did you bring a lesson plan for us this week? No. Hey, you're teaching we got us. a good you're... one on the Dobson fly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, was, that was a pretty good that presentation good. on the Dobson fly. I need to know about my enemies out there at that river. Well, Dr. Able... Supply's not your enemy, but he's, he's just somebody you have to talk to. You know, another good example is people that haven't seen them out by, you visit, people that visit you and have now seen them, they're scary. And mm-hmm. now you can explain they shouldn't be scared of the Dobson Fly. Well, not... well, that's the question. They have those big pinchers on the end. Can they hurt you? Well, they, they'll, they'll, they're not aggressive. They don't, they're not trying to, they're, they're, it's all defense, mm-hmm. basically. They're not aggressive organisms. The Helgramites aren't either. They're hiding under a rock. You're the one that right. opened You're the up. one that came here. Yeah. You're, you're, oh, I'm you're, not going to see none of them. They can have it. But they're, they're not, Do you I, fish? I, I would, I, I, I'm not, not no, going to call it, let you call them your, uh, your adversaries. They're your friends and neighbors. Your dots and flies. That's, okay. that's the way everybody is out there. Mm-hmm. So you just got to get along. So it has I two different can, names from when it's a baby along. to when it's an adult. Excuse so me. So when it's a when it's that sluggy thing, it's a Helgamite, and then when it gets bigger, it's a dots and fly. Yeah, and you would never think the two were related in a million years. It was like years, and they weren't for a million years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's an evolutionary joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're gonna strike a balance out there somehow. 
me and the Dobson. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. What kind of fish does he have in the Shenandoah River? Oh, he's got a wonderful stream up there. They get the, it's a big river. It's, it's a smallmouth stream. That's what it's famous Why for. Why are you saying stream? Smallmouth bass is a beautiful stream and uh, fish. And uh, you have... Uh, but you have largemouth bass. That's that. It, it holds largemouth. Now maybe not in your stretch, but a lot of stretchers have a lot of largemouth in there too. Does it depend on the depth? Uh, a lot. Uh, the largemouth does like a bigger hole. Yeah. They're they're not as much. They're more of a lake fish. So largemouth is the ones you catch on the lake, and smallmouth's the one. But in the Shenandoah, you will catch either one. So they're they're both great fish. Um, Smallmouth is as good a fighter as any fish I've ever caught. Hmm. They fight better than a trout, really, or, or stronger. Uh, you have sunfish. There's uh, all types of different sunfish. You can call them bluegill. Those are surprisingly tasty. Yeah, they're good eating. And then you have what's called a rock bass, uh, a red eye, and uh, they're little stocky fish with a, they literally have a red a reddish eye and uh, I always like them they're good eating too <laughs> they have carp uh, oh yeah you got plenty of carp I mean the less carp you have the better mm. normally it's a healthier mm. stream but there's plenty of nice big old carp floating around in there uh, catfish yeah yeah, yeah uh, that's a. I never have fish for catfish up this high, but the lower you go, the more you run into. The slower the water, the more catfish. So I don't know what your stream is like. But, so in other words, a good smallmouth stream usually doesn't. You don't usually catch catfish in it. It's probably at least a hundred yards across there, isn't it? Yeah. Where you guys yeah. are. Yep. Front, do you get do you field, get yeah. uh, canoe traffic That's how wide through there? Is. You get a lot wow. of boat traffic. Yep. We uh, saw a couple last weekend. We saw two little groups of friends, kayakers, and then some canoers. Yeah. Yeah, it's a popular stream. It's, this spring's going to pick it up. I I'm I'm curious to see how busy that road gets. Yeah. Well, I don't so. think it'll get too much traffic, but you know, people will come in there and take a boat in and out. I'm sure at different spots. Well, they got a raft company too out there. Oh, okay. But they don't come all the way down with their buses and stuff because they'll they'll go and pick up people, drop them off with the tubes and everything. It's a whole, you know, huh. business. But um. Oh, that's great. I'm sure there's a lot of other people just parking along the side of the road and stuff there, too. I just wonder what it's going to be like. Oh, yeah. Last couple of days, we've had a, for those that don't live in Virginia, there's been a pretty alarming, astounding wildfire situation. Have you been following that at all? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, luckily, the winds have died down today, and it looks like they're starting to get a handle on it. But we had a, we've had a pretty rare drought situation coupled with uh, some high wind days that have yeah it's calming down now but we've had i think we had over a dozen fires in we augusta the county map last night and it was just yeah it's crazy there's the one out there in buffalo gap because of yeah. the car wreck wow. right yeah that was crazy mm -hmm. you keep i keep wondering how in the world they're having who's lighting fires and this wind and uh, of course, the automobile wreck explained that one. Mm -hmm. It still doesn't explain why anybody else would be lighting up out there. Mm -hmm. well, well, from what I heard, the word on the street in Newmarket is it's, it was the original fire was on Thursday, and that was the day I think I I told you guys that. We saw like the beginning of a smoke trail, like, and it was billowing off the top of this mountain in Page County, and it looked like it had just started. You could see the end of the smoke, like the beginning of the smoke, rather, and it was just billowing. And I was like, man, some, I was, I didn't know what what I was look, seeing, but it was something was on fire, hard and fast. And I heard that it, a propane 
it was some kind of propane tank accident. Oh wow! Mm. And it and it ignited, and that started a fire that by Saturday was classified as contained because I I was looking it up and everything because we could smell some smoke and we were like, man, I wonder if that fire still burning, you know? And it was contained, but then, you know, a couple days, few days later, they had all that wind whipping through there and it just took off. Now there's over a hundred just in that area. Mm -hmm. From New Market to Luray, there's over a hundred fires. Mm. The whole thing, the whole stretch of 211 out there, all just burning. Mm. It's, it's scary. So, I was literally going down rabbit holes last night, like about volunteer fight. I had this whole vision. I want to, I want to fight the fires if I can. <laughs> so I was looking <laughs> into all kinds of volunteer firefighting and stuff. And What'd you find out? Well, I nothing that I could probably like go into great detail um, like from memory here but what i found out was that i could do it it's hmm. just where where and how would i have the time so you can sign up and you can take these courses that they teach you um the actual fire department trains you to for the certain fire things because you could do volunteer rescue or fire uh out there around here too but um yeah there's it's like a whole multi step like training program that you go through um so that you could help them fight fires it's pretty cool yeah don't you have to be sexy i see on movies and stuff they're all like real good looking guys aren't they? yeah don't I know. you have to be sexy <laughs> well, that was the other thing i learned was i'm not saying you're not sexy I can't, this isn't something that. i can just jump right into because i mean you know <laughs> but you see them in the movie, work to do. you see them in the movies like a truckload of like you know half a dozen gorgeous men jumping off to fight the fire you know these guys have nothing better to do with their time than fight fires <laughs> I would be out of breath probably first of the group. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something to aspire to. It nonetheless got me. Now, are you, are you good at situations like that, keeping your head about you? And, or would you I've see the fire? I've never been in a fire. Like, I've never been in one like that. I think that would be terrifying. Mm -hmm. But, it, but, yeah, it might be. But if it's not too terrifying, it would be really cool to stop, to be a part of oh, like, yeah. the team that stops like it. Right. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I'm intrigued. We'll yeah. become volunteer firemen. Can you side. see it? We could Jabber John on the sea. Here we could be come. a force, man. I mm -hmm. mean, to reckon with, the fire would not want to mess with us. <laughs> Just. Just us signing up might prevent forest fires. Why don't you do one of those, like, like one of those guys that sits in the fire tower for like four months at a time by yourself? That's a long stretch, but I would want to do that for a shorter amount Damn. of time. I would, I would volunteer for that. Damn. Take Benny up there, my dog, our dog. <laughs> Not all those old beat writers, they always be up there, you know. <laughs> Some fire station up in the middle of the woods somewhere like four months later somebody comes all right your time i'm going up there now there's some good ones around here fire towers they, they make good hikes you know oh yeah and it's fun to get you ever been to any of the fire towers around this area region you, Me? yeah you ever found yourself at one? Oh yeah the um, one on elliot's namesake yeah elliot's knob there's one up mm, there yeah I think, yeah, I've been to that one, not much, but I have been there once. Mm -hmm. I was lost. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to get up there to see where you were, get your bearings? Yeah, I had to yeah. get my bearings. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if I was in Kentucky or Tennessee. <laughs> oh, goodness. We're already at 20 after 8. Oh, I didn't even look. The, what are the what are the Twitter for, or not Twitter? What's it called? Twitch. What is Discord? It Discord. What did they say? There's a link in the description of this. Oh, maybe there's not this time. I got to be better at that. 
but definitely invite everybody to join our Discord server. It's Nathan's Land on Discord. Uh, Beans says she had four root canals on the same tooth. Hmm. What is a root canal? That's where they leave the tooth, but they dig in underneath and pull out the root. <laughs> so it's a dead tooth, but they don't. It's, it's like either that or pulling the tooth. If it's ab, if it's abscess, they have, you know they pull it. But if they just uh, do a root canal, and then they don't, that kills the nerve, and so it's a dead. It's just dead material up there. So is a tooth living? Yes. It is. Yeah, and the tooth is alive. It's funny, Rennie. I was texting him, telling him my my story, and one of his responses, which I thought was funny, he says. It's so funny. We spend our whole lives trying to keep our teeth from rotting and and everything, and then we die, and then they just last forever. It's like the la the, the last part of you that's probably going to be right. on this earth is going to be your teeth, <laughs> but they're Identify so by high your maintenance dental. throughout your life, and then except for you, you <laughs> I, I opted out. Right. <laughs> Didn't, I'm not going to check that. Did you nice. keep any of them, or they just tossed them? What do you have? Did you keep any of your teeth? I sold them to assorted women <laughs> around the world. Um, got some pretty good market value on them. <laughs> They're on necklaces. I was wondering about 70 that. Seventy-year-old women are into that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was wondering, like, it's like when my mom passes away, are we going to be cleaning out the house and open up a box and find, like, all of our teeth in there? Like, ah, well, she was a murderer. <laughs> Like, oh, my God, are those my teeth or your teeth? I mean, you're going to be like, oh, my God, she was now, the tooth fairy. <laughs> now, do you have any of your kids' teeth? Mm-hmm. God, so people just keep teeth in a... What, what are you, you going to do? Are you going to throw them out? I don't know. It's like, so, so, like the, so, in the natural progression of life, you, when you get older and your parents pass, you, find, you collect your own teeth back? That's I've got part them. of it. I've got them now. <laughs> right. That is a really good question because everybody must. Have. So I'm gonna. I, get... I doubt my mom. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'll text her as soon as we get off. Do you still have any of my teeth <laughs> from when you were the tooth fairy? Oh, I'm not like ruining tooth fairies for people all across the world right now. Yeah. But, just, but just think. So. It, so. It, Thank you. So it, if, if I get mine back. Then the people are going to find me and go, he doesn't even have children. Why does he have kids' teeth here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> something, something, very yeah, really, I, something very suspicious here. This fits into experience. that category of worrying about something that tomorrow you're not going to remember. To <laughs> I think we're having way too much discussion of teeth. Personally. Well, yeah, those. Uh, you, know, you know, I, I don't so. think there's any sensitivity in this room at all <laughs> for the plight of those. Yeah, of we're us. definitely going to have to put a trigger warning on this episode of Jabber John. Yeah, for I mean, anybody out there struggling with teeth, <clears throat> might not want to watch bugs. this one. I should have stood up for us more <laughs> early on. Well, you know, I should have fought. Now back. we've talked about it. In the future, we can just reference Ad nauseum. people to episode Ad 58. Na way, <laughs> I would have to say, uh, as far as episode 58 goes, your tooth got a whole lot more discussion than it deserved. I, I wouldn't argue with that. No, I, I wouldn't argue you, with I that. didn't think you would. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's been, it's been weird lately. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I promise I won't even bring it up next week. <laughs> now, do, now, I know. Bro, no, you'll have another one on I'll the other. Have you'll have I'll, one on the I'll other have side. Something else we'll talk too much about. <laughs> <laughs> now, piranha have teeth, don't they? Do piranha have teeth? Do yeah. they are, they're now, that's just the teeth. dumbest thing I've ever they're, heard. They're teeth with with <laughs> with fins. It's, but is there any other fish like? Like little fish that have teeth, not like sharks or oh, something. Oh yeah, like. lots of fish have teeth. Is there any trout? Fish? Trout there... have teeth. They have teeth. They all have little tiny teeth. Just little barbs that stick uh, out and yeah, grab yeah, when you're That's a good clean. point. It, not teeth, or would they? Yeah, of... no, nah, you're right. They're not. But piranha cal... has They're not calcifiers deposits that mammals make. In oh, their is that jaw. a mammal thing? Well, not just a mammal, but because crocodiles I mean, definitely have yeah. teeth. Crocodiles. Shark 
shark. You collect sharks. But too. piranha will have like actual teeth. Or just some raggedy... I think they have, well, they have actually sharp little needles. I don't know what they're made of. Right. They might not be made of bone, right. if that's what you're getting at. Probably not. You found shark's teeth on the beach, right? Oh, yeah. They're like the coolest thing ever. You want some? Ever. My mom, my you mom, have a bunch? My mom keeps giving them to the archive to try to get rid of them. They're so fun to find. I know, that is a special moment. Kyle. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Piranha teeth. Piranha teeth. Look at that. Now you see that that's he good teeth maintenance going on with that <laughs> fish right there. Yeah, they're very they, clean. He brushes three times a day. Pretty straight. They don't do the sweets. <laughs> the the sweets? <laughs> they don't eat a lot of sweets. sweets right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean if you're sweet, now, they'll eat you. Well, not right. <laughs> now does America have piranhas or that's always like like South America. Yeah. We didn't let them in. What's the most dangerous <laughs> fish in the waters of Virginia? Well, there aren't any fish that attack people or anything. I like was going to ask you: are, Is there anything in that river I should worry about? Any river monsters? Any biting water things? moccasins? I know there's oh, snakes. snakes oh. Well, you know, the, the, the thing about I have never run into a problem with snakes. People, I haven't either. They're I'm okay Mainly, with them. first of all, 98% of the snakes you're going to see along that river are a common water snake, uh, and they're uh, they can be aggressive. The bigger they get, they can be aggressive, but they're not poisonous, and they don't usually bite. But uh, you know, if you step on one, he'll bite you. Uh, but you know, you're not usually going to step on one because they're usually smart enough to avoid you yeah. uh, for a lot of different reasons. But you know, snakes are not a real. I remember when I moved out to Frank's Mill, these guys pull over in a pickup truck and said, I killed a copperhead down there just last week. You've got to be careful out here. <laughs> and I lived there 15 years and never saw a copperhead. Mm -hmm. Never saw one. I saw a lot of water snakes. Now, I'm not saying there weren't any copperheads around. I'm right. just saying that you I never saw one. I never saw one in, in my property, you know, around my property. Mm -hmm. So. You know, that's what you hear and what you deal with right. and what you learn about. But uh, as far as the only thing you can, if you could step, if you stepped on a snapping turtle, he would take your toe off. Snapping turtles are um, something. But they're again, in river, you think? They're, excuse me? They're in there? They're in there and they're very well disguised, laying on the bottom looking like a rock. Uh, but again, that's never happened to me. I've I've seen snapping turtles, but I've never run into that incident either. I feel like you had a story you used to tell about catching a snapping turtle by the back of the shell well, yeah. and its neck coming out and being way longer than you thought. Oh, yeah. It, it came real close. I was holding it up like that. It was about that big around. It was a big one. And I was holding him like that. And that head came around. He got to about right here. Wow! And he's going, he's going like that. They're strong, right? Oh yeah. Oh man. Yeah. They always say, you know, they won't let go till dark or sundown. Uh. But uh, no, he was. Oh, it, that's a good. That was scary. Image right there. Yeah, that. Yeah, that was a lot scarier than your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so did you just pick it up to look at it or you were helping it or what were you doing? Uh, I was catching a snapping turtle to show off in front of a bunch of people because I'd been drinking. <laughs> uh, probably that would be what my guess is. I was just being an idiot. <laughs> I do that occasionally. I, I just like to experience that so I can compare it to the, you know, my normal intelligence so <laughs> I just I just found out something so you can be proud of yourself well what I, you know what I found out I did a lot of analysis and it seems like I had a lot more fun when I was acting like an idiot <laughs> than when I was being my real self right so that consequently reinforces your idiotic behavior mm -hmm. so I'm not really an idiot I just act idiotically because it's more fun mm. that's my latest theory <laughs> no, I, I just found a frame last week that, um, <laughs> you know, with the with the, with the science background and stuff, everybody that was really good at it went into like higher 
jobs. He said they only hired deviants as science teachers. Said what? He told me they only hired deviants that would to teach science in high school. <laughs> It's like cause everybody else has moved on to the higher jobs. And ever since you told me that, I keep thinking, man, the high schools are just packed full of these deviant <laughs> science teachers. <laughs> and I, who's your chemistry teacher? He's really nice. I heard he's a deviant. Yeah, I think he might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking not about deviants. You're talking about money and oh, priorities. If, if, I have, if I have just one minute to tell, we were talking about, I'm not going to tell the people, some friends of mine that have been together and broken up a bunch of times. And we were talking about it. And he said, he said that, that, that's worse than a bad case of mildew. What? <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. I guess I like mildew. He was talking, keeps... to, uh, he didn't tell that very well. It's not that funny, but he, he said. Don't use names though. Oh, of course okay. not. But he was talking about relationships that seemed to be, you know, to me it sounded like a toxic relationship. And I said, no, that doesn't sound like a relationship. That sounds like mildew. <laughs> and that just kind of popped out. I thought it was kind I of cute at the time. <laughs> but, but I liked it better the more I said it. <laughs> but it just popped out. It. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I haven't sung this one in years. Mm. Thanks for tuning in out there, everybody. Sure do appreciate you. We'll Love see you. you next time. Time for the leaving song. Socks and teeth. <laughs> Socks and teeth. <laughs> Perfect. Poor man don't like thinking about either of these just pork and beans, please. <laughs> just pork and beans, the weather and dreams.
perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we talked about it too much. Yeah, it's just beautiful. <laughs> and, Love you all. And next week I want to talk about how long it's been since I've changed the size. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm not going to want to miss that, folks. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. But if you do miss it, two weeks will be the same one. So you never <laughs> yeah. really miss it. That's right. Well, can we talk about these socks yet? Uh, we keep forgetting to talk about it, but you also keep forgetting to change them. So. <laughs> we don't change them. We just unpeel them a couple times. Socks and teeth. Wow. Hello. Yeah, that, That's a great song. 